Yeah, in between each question. Jen. Jen be good. That'd be good. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as the booze is here. <laughs> you talked about how you wanted to incorporate a lot of creativity and ideas into um, a variety show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, could you expand on that a little bit? What do you What do you mean by variety? Well, your question is, if I were to create a variety show, how would I incorporate creativity? Yeah, pretty much into uh, the show. Well, one thing that I would do is interview uh, uh, creative professionals. And the other side of the show would be to uh, have conversation with um, what people consider non-creative professionals and where they find creativity in their um, careers. What do, you mean, what do you mean a non-creative? Like an accountant. An accountant. accountant would say, well, I don't have a creative profession. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to have a conversation to disprove to disprove that what they're doing is something. What they're doing is as creative as a painting. As a painting. Hello, hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Selena De Leon and welcome to the Busted Minutes. Tonight we'll be taking a look into a gathering of a unique group set on developing a TV show that looks onto how anyone can find creativity in their lives. We have Reginald Baylor, who you saw a glimpse of in that short video. You will also see Isaiah Joshua, a musician of many talents and a teacher at the West End Conservatory, and a few other faces who were brought together in development of the show. The big question was, how do you bring creativity in your workplace? And can you find creativity anywhere? Let's kick things off and take a look at the rest of the Reginald Baylor Studios and see what he has to say. Reginald? R-E-G-I-N-A-L-D, Baylor, B-A-Y-L-O-R, Reginald Baylor, uh, creative director at Reginald Baylor Studio. What, what, how would I sum up my work here at Baylor Studio? Well, we're uh, a, creative, uh, a creative industry firm. Okay. When you say creative industry, uh -huh. do you mean more so like art, acrylic, sculpting? Um, food, music. Events, public art, private art, temporary art, interior design, architecture, marketing, uh, computer coding, web design. Looking at the resources that are available and repurposing and reusing them. Okay. That's creativity. So you define creativity as the repurposing of, of resources. Of resources. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you say repurpose, what do you mean by that? Repurpose, uh, re-represent, redesign, recolor, reforge. It's just to transform it some way. So when you, how did, how do you plan on exploring some of that right now? You said you want to talk about the variety show. Yeah, well, one of the um, one of the things, what uh, content or developing original content is one of the foundations of Reginald Beto Studio, and one of the ideas is to do a a, a, a variety show or a talk show that is uh, exclusively about Milwaukee and people in Milwaukee and places in Milwaukee. Would you have any ideas or how would you begin structuring that? Well, you know, it would be great to have a great host. You know, a dynamic host is is probably the, uh, I'd say again, the, the cornerstone to the to the show. You know what I mean? They, 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 they pull the audience through whatever that experience is. Why don't you get host? I, I don't think that's my uh, strong suit. I think my questions might tend to be a little bit more uh, boring or industry related, as opposed to someone that could just uh, meet people where they are and um, you know dig into the guest or the person that's on exhibition or, the, or whatever talent someone's showing. Be more interested in what they're doing as opposed to me. I'm always interested in what the uh, business is doing. Everyone is the uh, the creative process, the creative mind, creative intelligence is um, something people use every day. Not just artists, but accountants do, uh, lawyers do, uh, engineers do. I don't care what you do. Uh, 
creative thought is a, a daily activity. So how would you say that you would bring creativity towards your workplace? Wow, some really vibrant artwork, and I can't wait to see how more of that played out after leaving on that cliffhanger. It really is a tough question. How do you bring creativity to the workplace? There are many answers that each person could give you, so we have exactly that. Let's take a look at what two other people involved with this Baylor Studios TV show have to say about the creative world. Montavious Jones, uh, Economic Development Specialist at the Department of City Development. Blinding. <laughs> Do not look at the lights. Yeah. Hope you don't like your retinas. Hmm? Hope you don't like your retinas. Apparently I don't. Can I put my sunglasses on? <laughs> I would do the interview on sunglasses if they let me. I would start by bringing creative people into the workplace. I mean, in Milwaukee, we already have such a, um, a capacity of people who are creative and are doing interesting things, um, who need platforms, and then if we can pair those people with you know, some of the work that we need done in the city, especially um, in my role as a government employee. We go to, we're in Milwaukee, we go to a lot of festivals in the, in the summer when it's nice out. Somebody has to curate that, curate the content, um, curate the vendors. So there are people already out there doing the work that we need done. It's just how do we get those people connected to the resources and um, platforms that they can best show their their work. I do believe everybody has, you know, a creative side to them. You create your, your wardrobe, you have to choose that. You were probably pretty intentional about that. Um, or lack of intentionality, you know, that's a, that's a choice that you've made. So uh, we can do that for all kind of other stuff, the car you drive, the house you own. That's all part of your creative process. So everybody's creative in some aspect. Okay, so my first name is, or do I not have to say that, right? Okay, um, Capri Golden, first name Capri, last name Golden, and my official title uh, would pretty much be visual merchandiser. So what, uh, what does that mean to be a visual merchandiser? Yes. So what does that mean to be a so to be a visual merchandiser means that you are pretty much responsible for the visual outlook of a space. I take care of the way that uh, the space looks creatively um, to create uh, the energy, the mood, um, the feel of a space, particularly for retail. You compose the space to create different themes, um, to display uh, the products pretty much in the store, um, to really get the customers engaged so that they, you know. Yeah, I say even with visual merchandising, you have to have somewhat of this like magical touch sometimes um, just to catch the interest in the eye of the customer. And you're kind of catching the interest in the eye of yourself and kind of just playing around with things and seeing, you know, if this looks good here or we can move some things there and um, create another feel to it. You can be creative in so many different ways, just throughout everyday life, switching up my routine. I don't wake up at this time, I wake up at that time. You use a seasoning that you haven't used before. Those are creative gestures to me. It can be done in numerous ways. Uh, I'll give you the advice my father gave me on my first show with him at AfroFest. Um, if you play something you think is wrong, do it again. Because then everybody thinks it's perfect. Well, people, in just a moment, we'll show you a teacher with some great words of wisdom for young musicians and get a few good glimpses at where he works. But before then, we have Erasmo Guerrero, a chef at Paro Anomi Casino in Milwaukee. And he has a quick recipe for us. Erasmo, what have you got for us? Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to cook a basic sweet cheese crepe. Mm. It's something sweet, especially for this month. <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's start with some uh, <coughs> couple ingredients over here. Let's start with the flour. Ooh. Mix flour in the bowl. Let's do the egg. 
Well, that's a lot of eggs. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Do salt. And then we mix this a little bit. Nice. All the dry stuff on the side. This is way different than my house. We just make crepes. <laughs> we just like do that water, shake okay. it up, and then it's all done. It's nice. Over here we got the milk. We got butter. <laughs> and then also we got an egg over here. So we're gonna incorporate. Mm. Milk, melted butter, <laughs> and egg. Wow. We have this ready. Put this on. <laughs> okay. We got everything right. We got to make sure everything is mixed. Perfect. Mix well. Is this something that um, you learned off the internet or is this something you grew up with? Actually, uh, I used to work in a place in California a few years ago, uh, a oh, French wow. place. We used to make out all kind of crepes. This is one of our traditionals. The Swiss cheese oh, crepe, mm. or we used to make like a pesto, chicken crepe, the salsa crepe, mm. the Mediterranean crepe with crepes, uh, artichokes, feta cheese, olives. Yeah. Yeah, but this is what was a, this was one of the best sellers over here. The Swiss cheese crepe, especially like I say, for this mom. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Man. And it's so crazy how the crepe is like so versatile. You can make so many. Is there is this your favorite crepe? Is this what you do in the household a lot? This or? is this is something I make for my kids at home actually. Oh, so sweet. Yep, something like more for fam family. Mm -hmm. So next with a little oil, M spray. <laughs> Man. What got you into making crepes? Is it just something you love or is cooking just something in general you're passionate about? Well, I like cooking is my passion. Mm -hmm. Cooking is my passion and um, I like to learn something different every single day, especially when you have something in your heart. Thank I got my mom, I got all her, her love and I, when, when I go visit my mom, I always cook something, to, something for her. Mm. But she like that, not having to cook. My mom loves it when everybody else cooks. Yeah, she loves my cooking too. Does anybody at home cook with you? Uh, when my kids get out home, yeah, one of my kids is chef too, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's just in the blood. Yep, so this is the actual crepe right <gasps> here. You see? That's crazy. That was like in two seconds it was on that pan. Man. Where do you see yourself going in the future, not just with crepes, but in the cooking? Well, eventually I want to own my own restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, own my own business. And uh, I have a lot of experience cooking, so something I, I've been doing for a long time. Yeah, definitely. Yep. <laughs> so, crepe is almost done, like you see over here. Where can we find these crepes in Milwaukee if we want to try them out for ourselves? Well, it's a lot of places where you can find a place. Uh, we started growing this business at home. Uh, <laughs> I can give you more information about that, but a lot of places do this at the restaurant. Ooh. See? See? And that's the crepe. That's crazy. So here, I'm going to present some for you. I'm Put excited to eat. Here. <laughs> this is the crepe. Ooh. Crepe is done. Also, you can garnish them, make a little fancy with some orange. Nice. Some berries over here. Oh yeah, definitely need that. Looks so pretty. Yeah, especially if you, you know, love somebody and make some, someone happy. <laughs> so a couple good. more uh, garnish over here. A oh, couple man. more berries. You kids are really lucky to have this weekly. Oh yeah. my goodness. This is, this is something you, you want to try at least once a week. <laughs> Probably keeps the mindset up happy. Well, thank you so much, Edasmo. This has been something I have to try at home with my family. As promised, everyone, let's hear what our musician had to say. Uh, I'm going to say, I, let me start it over. I'm going to say my stage name. <laughs> stage name. Yeah, Isaiah Joshua is my stage name. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Yeah, so what's your... Uh, my birth name, my government name is Isaiah Adams. The thing is, my whole family is musical. My father plays pretty much every instrument. And uh, he forced us all to play violin at a very, very early age. I did not like it. Forgot everything about violin. Yes, <laughs> I just blocked all those memories away. Um, but my sisters had a singing group back in the day. Um, so, uh, forgot the name of it. Next Generation, you know, New Generation, something, you know, a gospel name like that. I wasn't involved in that at all. I still wasn't, didn't have a music bug until a friend of mine, Ari, um, in ninth grade told me that we were gonna go to Florida for the jazz band trip for next year. So I picked up the saxophone and that's the history. Um, I kind of got thrown into teaching piano. I kind of figured it out on the fly and I came up with this method on my own to, instead of following a method book or following a curriculum, what I would do is have the student play. I guess the creativity is the absolute personalization of every lesson that I teach. So what about the creative process that you say, like, is there like first knowledge that you have to learn to start creating, or you start creating out of nothing and then you build your own knowledge? The, the answer is both. Um, an example I can give is like when you're learning a language. When you're a baby, you don't know any language. You can't understand any language, but you are creating. You're making all those sounds. Um, and as you learn more, you're kind of just putting words together randomly um, to express yourself. You don't know exactly what you want to say, but you are trying to say something. Um, so as your knowledge base grows, the, the, your comfort level in, in ex experimenting grows. So. Again, it's it's kind of both. Experiment first, but also kind of know what you're trying to what you're trying to do, what you're aiming for at the very least. What's your lyric creative writing process? How do you go through that? So my creative writing process is sort of like archaeology, where at the end result it seems like what was there was always there, you know. But I had to do a whole lot of brushing away dirt um, to get there. So. Um, a lot of songs that I write, I'll play something on guitar or play something on piano, and then I'll just mumble a melody um, and record myself mumbling. And then um, as my sec first or second listen through, I'm like, that word kind of sounds like truth. Now we're gonna figure out what the rest of the sentence says. And I kind of just dig through uh, the mumbled sounds. If, once you catch a hold of a word, then a, a theme starts to develop. You know, then you're, it's kind of like if you're looking for a red car, you, you only see red cars type of. Uh, so things kind of develop on their own based on like the first couple words I hear in those mumbles. Um, but yeah, the writing process is kind of just grabbing things from outer space. Well, I hope you all enjoyed learning about a great group of people and seeing the crew record all their thoughts and ideas. Remember to exercise your creative mind every day. Take care, everyone.